All right, thank you. Uh, my name is John uh, Curl. It's pronounced like Curl. Uh, we do funny things with R's and L's in English, and I got both of them in my name, so it's just to mess with you a little bit. And I just, here we go, lost my signal. Just now. Okay, moving in. <laughs> All right, so this is um, a talk about Miller, which you're going to find out about. It's a Swiss Army chainsaw, and I want to first of all thank my coworker Dirk Edelbutel, uh, who you may know from our fame. He's invented the term Swiss Army Chainsaw, and it makes me very happy. Um, this talk is in English, in, in English. Pero si me permiten, uh, es un sueño de toda la vida a visitar a la hermosa ciudad de Buenos Aires. So thank you very much for having me. It's, I am in love already. <laughs> Um, I am a software engineer. My, my day job, I work at a company called TileDB, and uh, this link here is the project that I work on. This is joint work with CZI. So Kate was in the room earlier. Um, we probably know people in common, and we are hiring. All right, so I've got the meat of my talk is two slides. I want to go through in some detail about an actual walkthrough, but I want to tell you a little bit of the story about why does this tool exist. Why, why, why one more tool? And uh, the answer is, esta herramienta se nació en una piscina de lágrimas. This tool was born in a pool of tears. So I'm, a, I'm not a data scientist, I'm not a data analyst, I'm a software engineer. It's what I do during my day job. And we have data files, and I kept seeing people gripping their CSV, and every time they did, it just hurt me a little bit, and I finally had enough. And so even though that's my day job, in the evenings, in my spare time, drawing a little bit on Laura Asion's talk, in my spare time, I came up with a tool for this. Um, so grep and cut and sort, if you're familiar with these, anyone, yes, Ock said, cool. <laughs> if you don't, it's cool, there's two different audiences, but um, they're line aware, you know, and they've been around for 50 years, and they're awesome, and you can do so many things with them, they're just, they're just everywhere, they're universal. They're really good for lines, and they're really good for integer fields. So you can pick out column seven, and you can get the ninth line. But CSV has column names, that's why they're there. And sometimes you just want the column named something. Likewise, CSV files, you can have a, a new line embedded inside double quotes, and grep is gonna see that as two lines. For us, it's, it's one record. So that's really what it's about. So this started off about 2015. I wanted a tool that instead of, if you grep for purple in this file, you're going to find the, the lines that have the word purple in them while they're data lines. The header's gone because the header doesn't have the word purple. Whereas using Miller with the CSV flag, if you look for purple, you're going to find the records that have the word purple. And for CSV, the key, the, their key value pairs, the header is the same keys, and the values are, are, the, are the data lines. So you just get all the records. A little more detail if you switch to, in, so this is dash dash CSV, using CSV format. You say your input is CSV and your output is pretty printed. And then you want to filter for color equals purple. That's actually looking at this color column and seeing if it is exactly equal to purple. And so that's the really the, the high level summary of, of why Miller exists, is to be able to do that. And if you were to just fall asleep now, that would be the, the primary payload of the why. And the rest is kind of the how. Um, I also want to say, in case you think that I think there are not other tools out there, please don't think that, because there are a lot. Um, there's um, XSV. Um, you can build indices on your data, which Miller doesn't. You can have an index next to it. Um, ZSV is like so fast. <laughs> I just learned about it. Um, there's tools that, you know, that interoperate with R, tools that do SQL, which Miller does not and will not. JQ is amazing if you don't know about it. Uh, the new shell I just found out about and uh, drawing on Karthik Ram's talk about uh, life cycles. I think if it were today that I was inventing Miller, maybe I would just go with New Shell because it's really cool. So you should check it out. Um, and there's more tools, uh, data set, frictionless this morning that Evgeny was talking about is super cool IDE. And as you're about to find out, Miller is a, so how does Miller fit in with these, right? So how is it different? So first of all, unlike some of these, like CSV TK that handle CSV, it's in their name, right? So Miller is multi-format from the beginning. I wanted, I realized that you have these records in multiple formats, and it's really the same thing under the hood. If you can parse CSV into a list of records, do stuff to that list of records, or the record stream, and print it out as some other format, maybe the same format, you could reuse a lot of code. And so that's really what it's there for. 
Um, it's got two parts. There's the things that are kind of the equivalent of sort and cut. They're just record aware. Like I told you earlier that you can, it knows about column names and things like this. Um, and there's also an awk like programming language, which I won't touch on much today, but it exists. So the real, um, the heritage is the Unix toolkit, the Unix pipe. It runs on Windows, not to worry, <laughs> and Mac, but with just, rec it's basically a record aware command line tool. So in terms of barrier to entry, if you're not familiar with the command line, that's going to take some getting used to. But if you're familiar with the command line, then this, you'll just like, oh, it does that. It should be a pretty much a lateral move. You don't need cloud infrastructure. It's just a, bi a single binary that goes on your laptop. And you don't need anything else, and no dependency problems. Um, it's free and open source. Um, and it handles um, bigger than RAM data, so people use it to handle hundreds of gigabytes. Um, Miller does streaming when it can, so if you want a sorted data set, it has to load it all into memory and then sort it and write it out. But if you're just doing something like filtering color equals purple, it'll just go through this little working set. Um, so people definitely use it for out, out of core processing. That's one of the reasons I invented it. Um, I should, find, I should also admit, uh, there's a saying that telling a, a software engineer that there, there exists a tool to do X is like telling a songwriter that there's, you don't have to write a love song because there's already songs about that, right? But like, you know, the songwriter said, I want to write that one. <laughs> I want to write this one. Um, and Miller's just a lot of fun, so I won't lie. Um, installation, just really quickly, basically, it's, it's been ported to a bunch of different um, operating systems. If you can install it using on Windows or Mac using Brew, Choco, Yum, the things you know how to do. Uh, I did want to say one little caveat, which is older distributions have older versions. So if you get a like some Red Hat something from 2020, it's going to have the version of Miller from 2020. So um, if you click this link here, you can find out how to get the current version, which is 6.7. All right, so this is slide is uh, thanks to my coworker Aaron Wolin at TileDB. He suggested, but you died, this, this is a lot of words, so don't read them all. The point is, I'm going to drill in on a couple things, like cut and sort. And he said, why don't you let everybody know there's a lot of options? So basically, just know that you there's more than I'm telling you about. So there's the ability to you know reshape your data, do all sorts of bootstrap sampling, and um, kind of pivoting, and things like this. And there's a bunch of functions for data cleaning, like stripping white space, and removing commas, and removing dollar signs, and all that kind of stuff. Just, just know that you have the option. I'll let you get out a magnifying glass and read that later, but. Uh. All right, cool, so, um, yeah, so this is the meat of the talk, is this slide and the next one. And so what I wanted to do is just walk really quick through looking at a CSV file, which should be news to no one in this room. And uh, I want uh, just some site CSV files. At this uh, or, uh, organizations dash one million dot CSV, it's just a CSV file. And by the way, it's fake data. <laughs> So, um, so what do I want to do when I'm looking at data? I, I have a new file. Just, what is it? So the first thing I want to do is, is see what it is. So at the command line, you might do head dash n2. For Miller, you can do head dash n1. That'll be just the first record. So that's going to be the header line and the first data line. Um, and of course, it scrolled off to the right. So it actually goes out to about about here. <laughs> So what I so one of the reasons that I have multiple formats is um, like JSON is a file format, but the other ones that you might not have recognized, like the pretty print and uh, X tab, which is, stands for transpose tabular, it's not my best naming ever. It's actually kind of a silly name, but now I'm stuck with it. But all it means is the format in which so input is CSV and output is this transpose tabular, where you have columns going down like this and the data lines next to them. And if there were another record, you'd have a blank line and then more of those just paragraphs. So it's a really nice way to look at data. Um, so here we have, now we know what the data looks like. So there's organization ID, the company name, again, completely fictional, um, country description, so on and so forth. So what can I do with that? So um, just a, a couple random things. So again, saying Miller dash CSV. You, uh, there is such a thing as a .miller RC file, so if you get tired of typing dash dash CSV, you don't have to. You just put it in your home directory and say, I'm, I'm doing CSV unless otherwise specified. You don't have to type that every time. Um, and uh, from this, and grouped by country. So 
and basically this is like the system unique command. I just want to see how many countries are there. There's 243 countries. Uh, or I want to see how many there are in Argentina. So it's a little more interesting. There's um, the thing I didn't tell you. Things like filter or unique. Prints the as much as it can. There's another, it's kind of like a pipe, it's called the. These streams of data parsing. But I can just things um, within the same invocation. So I want to do unique dash C. Means are there any alphabetically? Head top. So we have Argentina tenth alphabetically. So that tells you there's thousand seventy. Smallest Argentinian organizations. So I want to filter for country to Argentina. And then my names are cut, and I'm going to filter the dash S because it's cut out this column. But I don't want to see the index in an organization ID right now. Not, not today. And I also want to remove the country column because I already filtered for it. So that's just the same thing that was in column column from the column. And then I want to sort numerically by number. Because what this does is it lets you take a column. Uh, in this case, I'm going to take the name of the number of employees on the column. Right? So, what, um, what you can do with reorder is you can put column names up front and everything else after that. Or you can put them at the end. Oh, before. And, uh, or you can you know, put one column after another one or before another one. So, it really just basically lets you put your data where you want to be. It's super easy. Um, and then again, look at that. So this so our 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 ten um, from basically ten smallest number of points. And then the last sort of technical example I want to show going from okay, the CSV input to JSON format. Um, and I want to do something else. I just want to filter for particular Argentina. Cut out the column name and put it And then I want to put something new in there. And so this is me using the DSL. This is a small example. I want to put provenance, a column called provenance, and I want to make it a map. Which is the conference is CFD 27, and the when is the timestamp is unique. I run it into a file, and I do that, I get a, you know, a mega byte map of data. Um, and then when I look at it, I do here, I'm going to do dash dash JSON, because it's a JSON for all this one. And I want to look at the first two records, and you can see that there's the data that was in there, except it's not modified. There's also new stuff in there. And so if you're a JSON person, this is really nice. You get the nested structure that's a little harder. And I guess this is uh, close to the end. So about uh, thank you very much. I don't actually finish the work. Um, but we might actually finish the work. So uh, okay, so if you want to help just work with people, um, there's a few different things. So there's the online help um, for the, the, the man page, and we uh, to know what help is interactive, so you want to search for the thing. Um, there's also some online docs using the docs, there's web docs, which um, I like quite a bit. Um, Nikos, that I mentioned earlier, suggested a glossary. 
Uh, Miller's been around for eight years, but it's been a glossary about a year ago. And I'm very happy to stay too much more than that. Um, also, you can go to, uh, I used to use GitHub for, for, for uh, so, um, issues, and you can file a uh, like work or feature request. I really wish you could do this, and this is for a lot of Miller teams and there's people doing that. Um, discussions if like, you don't know if it's a work report or feature request, it's like, I don't know, like, can someone tell me something, or if you have something really cool that you did, you can get other questions. In particular, this, if you go to the discussions and just talk about mm -hmm. these slides, there, and actually they're already there, and if there's any other sort of movies, we can go. So now you know how to say help wanted. You didn't already from walking down the street. Um, there's a lot of feature requests. So what happens with Miller is people ask for features, and if they're easy, they'll probably do them, and if they're not, they're, they kind of they go on for a while. Um, Miller's open source, and uh, just like Arctic and Miller were talking, Time is the most precious resource that every developer of them has had. Also, anybody that does single cell biology, I would love to chat with those people. So, mm -hmm. or I'd love to chat with them, but regardless, of those are And I guess that's it. Are so, uh, there any questions? Yes, we have time for about two to three questions. So thank you, nice work. It's a really useful tool. I really like that. But I have one question that you may not like. Do you have plans to port the client on in the browser? <laughs> Never. <laughs> because Unix, Unix, you know, like command line, but I think as a JavaScript API, it would be really great. Oh, well. yeah, yeah. OK, cool. So <laughs> I do have one thing that's really cool, is you can do Miller and then HTTPS colon slash slash. And the internet, which is nice. that's cool. So really that's great. part of what you want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that part. And uh, a really uh, other question or suggestion: um, Do you have some samples where people could put their their examples of some useful comments? Because I think that could be useful to use with some of these new NLP tools to generate them. So you yeah. say in English and generate the output. Yeah, that would be a good uh, topic for discussions. I think um, if you have anything there and and. Am I talking about like people just posting things that are useful? Yes, for yeah. example, uh, to cut a column and group by some other column and then put the comment that I could reuse it. Oh, the comment. Be... Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Okay, cool. We should chat a little bit. I think GitHub Discussions is the best place that I have right now. Mm -hmm. um, and there's probably got to be a little bit more like code sharing, like uh, Karthik was talking about development, right? Yeah. <laughs> like that last thing people tend to just, they just, so if, yeah, there should be a place for things like that. Yes, yes. So thank you. Really great to thank you. We have time for one more question. Okay. Yeah, no, yeah, for, for the other person, I, I think that it, it's, it's very useful to put a, a, all useful comments on command line 2 or cheat.sh. That's uh, where I always find things like, like this. Uh, I want to point out that the, I was astonished about how well uh, you and other people uh, in the project, uh, answer a question I, I post on Unix uh, Stack Exchange. So I, I really want to point out the, the, the kindness. Uh, I, I, for example, uh, suggest to, to move the documentation to read the docs. No, it, it was me. It was me. And, and yeah, and you, and you was very kind uh, in the answer and, and you know, on, on the questions and, and all the things. And, and it was really, Really a, a good time. It's a very uh, uh, difficult command. Uh, I'm used to, to grab to uh, uh, AWK uh, and said, uh, this, this was tough. So I, I want to ask uh, two little uh, questions. If, uh, uh, if, uh, it's, uh, if you are thinking to add to uh, PSH autocomplete, it's very useful oh. to, it's very, very useful to, to, to have a, a autocomplete uh, on, on such a, a lot of options and comments. And the other question, if is there are uh, any performance difference between, uh, for example, uh, using unique sorts, uh, cuts here than doing uh, with uh, pipes in the traditional way? Yeah, yeah, so let me take those in a very low, well, let me take an order one, three, two. So first of all, thank you um, about the community. That's always been my hope that it's a kind place and I'm really glad to hear that. I also wanna point out Andrea cause he's really all over Stack Overflow. So if you ran into Miller, it was probably him. Um, and um, he's, a, he's a, a contributor there. Um, 
The third one is about using pipes. It's, it's fine. I mean, you can, you can use Miller cut pipe to Miller sort, pipe to Miller something else. If you want, it'll work. It just seems a little bit wasteful to be string parsing and string joining, or you can use then. It's just, it's really the same. And you might find it works a little faster or not. It uses coprocessing, multiprocessing either way. Um, and then ZSH completion, yeah, that would be really cool. I should, I should, uh, I should get on that. And if if you know anyone that knows how to do this, it'd be good. I think it's something that's copy pasteable. Once you know how to do it once, it's easier to do it again. But yeah, they're, 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 and what the real underlying question is, there's just a lot to Miller. There's just a lot, a lot of lags. <laughs> there's just a lot, and that's its weakness. And this would help. All right, thank you, everyone, and let's give John a round of applause. <laughs>